Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, experimental module on EDM drilling today. Uh, we are actually going to today learn how to drill very small holes of the order of all the way from 100 microns to about close to a few mm and uh, with a high aspect ratio. Uh, so typically, uh, how, for example, in a metal, if we want to do a drilling of 500 microns for a length uh, into the workpiece of about 35 mm. So it's a huge aspect ratio that we are talking about. And uh, they are the conventional machining, the conventional drilling where there is a mechanical metal to metal cutting action doesn't work out very well because of stresses and strains because uh, the drill that is being made there uh, doesn't achieve the hardness level uh, that is needed to sustain the pressure for drilling such a slender hole or a slender structure. So this actually is a module where you can actually uh, in a piece of iron as you can see here. Uh, drill very small, very fine holes and even through holes using uh, the process of EDM, uh, electro discharge machining. So this for example is the, uh, is, is the kind of high aspect ratio hole that we are talking about. These two holes right here are about close to 700 microns each and if you look at the length of it, this uh, is all the way into the workpiece for about close to 35 mm. Okay, so such kind of structures, uh, it's very difficult to make using conventional drilling and we would use this EDM drill for this purpose. So the EDM drill that I am talking about is based on a non-conventional process of machining where uh, you instead of having a mechanical action, I think I had illustrated it in great details earlier, is basically focusing on ablation, thermal ablation and the ablation is made by uh, creating a local spark in a small region which would do heat transfer and it would do local melting of a certain region and then basically that melt is carried forward into the uh, stream of electrolyte which uh, flows through the system. So there are a few modifications which happen to the conventional EDM process when we talk about the drilling process. Here for example is a machine, the easy drill which actually does this job uh, very well and if you look at the various components of this machine there is a workpiece stage that you can see here. And this workpiece stage is, can be manually controlled uh, using uh, these two uh, lead screws okay, on both directions. In an XY motion you can control that. There is a tool holder which actually can, is able to move in a Z direction, in a Z direction. And it can either move towards the workpiece or away from the workpiece. Okay. And uh, then there is a area, the work zone which is actually in this particular uh, area which is well protected because there is going to be splashes which come out uh, because of the throw of the dielectric fluid. The machine itself is highly automated because it works on a controller and the controller can be found out on this part of the machine right here. So the controller can be found on this part of the machine right here which would actually give a, a good uh, basis of setting up the various X, Y and Z controls uh, in this particular system. There are certain stages which are uh, put in a coarse manner or adjusted in a coarse manner by pendant box which is kept right in the bottom here or in the back side of the machine here on the tool column. Okay? And there is uh, subsequently a motion in the positive as well as the negative x direction or z direction when we work on this pendants. There is of course another motion which uh, happens because of uh, the, the auto positioning of the controller, this controller. And uh, you see here this particular spindle here shows the actual tool which is uh, actually a cylindrical hollow. So this uh, tube right here is about probably close to 500 uh, micrometers and uh, the diameter of this uh, uh, tube is close to about, uh, about 300 microns or so. The system apart from all this, so this is actually the holder which would be able to move in the Z direction to do all the drilling action. Okay, the tool is connected to the spindle here and adjusted for the length and there is a, a screw which is also called the rolling screw which is fitted at the bottom uh, which actually grabs this uh, particular tool all the way to the tip here which actually is responsible for doing the spark disposal into the system. So having said that there are some other sub units of the system which you can find here. This for example is a stabilizer uh, for the servo motor of the tool okay, and it is very important to protect the system from voltage surges and this uh, is designed for actually handling high voltages and being able to protect the tool properly. There is uh, again a unit here as you can see right in this particular can you have the dielectric fluid 
which is typically a water based system uh, emulsion kind of a system uh, which would provide the necessary insulation between the tool and the workpiece when the machining happens. There are certain other aspects inside the tool if you go into this box right here there is a pumping system that you can see inside and this is able to pump the fluid from this particular uh, box all the way to this uh, tip right here and the fluid is dispensed coaxially in between this tube into the workpiece zone. There are of course some other electrical parts of this system like a transformer etc which uh, can feed voltages into the system. The EDM voltages can typically go very high which results in uh, the discharge, the corona discharge of the electrode tip on the top of the tool surface. So, some of the basic parameters which come with this machine in the spec sheet here, the uh, basic uh, dimension of the tool travel or the relative tool workpiece travel here in this case is about 300 millimeters uh, in the x direction, about 200 millimeters in the y direction and uh, the z travel is limited to something about 300 millimeters again. So, it is correspondingly for small size work pieces one of the reasons why you can only use these tools for micro features and micro parts. The maximum work piece weight that it can support is a very high it is up to 250 kg although we do not need so much weight in the micro uh, dimensions or micro components. Uh, the pipe diameter that you have seen here which is actually this inlet diameter which would flush the uh, dielectric fluid in the work zone is close to varying from 300 microns as I just told to all the way to about 3 millimeters and the distance from the table to the bottom of the guide uh, is basically 120 to 370 millimeters that is what the span is ok. And uh, of course, the power input which can be given to the system it can sustain uh, a power input of all the way about 3 kilo volt ampere which is a pretty high power which is needed for all the EDM processes you are by thermal ablation trying to uh, remove material not only that you are trying to create a corona discharge. So, it actually necessitates a huge amount of power in the process. The maximum current that the system can support is about 20 amperes and the input voltage that it can give is 415 volts in a three phase supply of about 50 hertz frequency. So, that is what the specification of this particular tool set is and the maximum pressure that the pump can actually support is about 6 MPa. So, which ensures that there is a continuous supply of the fluid as you will see from the small gap which is there in the electrode uh, right here at the bottom ok and which actually results in the quick machining of small slender holes like structures in the workpiece. So, having said that uh, the uh, machining process can actually be uh, set up and I would like to step by step now show what are the various aspects which are related to setting up of the system. So, that you can draw a small hole of diameter about close to 500 microns all the way to about 35 mm. So, the first thing that you have to actually do is to be able to locate the hole and the dimension of the hole through a marker which is otherwise visible. So, let us say there is a certain point which you have located here with dimensioning etcetera where you have actually given a small hole ok in uh, this particular region here which is good to go for setting up the machining system. So, the first aspect that we want to actually do is to place uh, this particular work piece ok in uh, a region which is close to the um, close to the tool and try to now position the uh, the work piece in a manner. So, that it just goes right above the the tool ok. So, you can actually uh, see the hole uh, in a certain region and then go down in this direction. So, that we can actually have uh, the tool coming into that region tentatively where you want to position and you can that way position the tool ok very easily. So, this right here is the whole position where we have to align this particular work stage and pinpoint the tube uh, to fit to that position. So, what I am going to do is to sort of manually control uh, the stage in a manner. So, that the, uh, the, the drill head actually uh, goes to that particular region ok and then we can do the fine control of this thing by using this z axis motion where we can actually align this uh, <coughs> the electrode by feeding the electrode all the way to the tool surface ok. I will just uh, keep a little bit of gap between them and then try to uh, 
then try to approximately position it based on this uh, set of x y stages as you can see here ok. I just go a little bit more yeah. So, now it appears to be almost on the uh, particular hole uh, or particular point there we uh, want to drill actually. So, we will now go ahead and uh, try to uh, program the CNC controller and uh, try to set up a situation where the hole size that we are drilling here is close to about uh, 500 microns and the uh, the length up to which the the tool would go we are targeting to be about 35 millimeters. So, the reason why a pose button is used is basically you have to ensure that the tool touches the uh, the work piece uh, for setting the zero gap mode. Uh, one has to remember that there is a plasma formulation that we are talking about between the tool and the workpiece surface and there has to be a gap which is filled with an insulator or a dielectric. So, for that we need to really know or the tool needs to give this information get this information where it is supposed to uh, not reach ok. So, therefore, you have to sort of zero set the gap and then work on that mode uh, and do the various z values which can lead to the formulation of such arcs and plasmas. So, the A post button actually is uh, related to uh, the setting up of the zero gap between the tool and the workpiece surface and in fact, if you want to really further check uh, this uh, with the sound there is an option here called the buzzer button which you have to switch on ok for the buzzer uh, to actually sound whenever the gap has been zeroed down and the electrode uh, the tool electrode is touching the workpiece. So, let us switch this on. And you can see now that there is a buzzer which has come because of the tool uh, touching the particular workpiece. You can of course, uh, just set this buzzer uh, off actually and this you can ensure now that the gap is 100 percent closed and this is the zero setting for the tool which you want to uh, illustrate. So, now what we have eventually done here is basically we have given a x position and a y position by means of the controller. Uh, by means of the lead screws manually and then also have been able to uh, control the z value in a manner so that the gap is reset to 0. So, in this controller there is an option here called the DRO which leads you to actually uh, monitor the gap ok uh, x y z where you can do the zero setting action. So, after doing this uh, position setting you uh, use the stop button here ok. So, you ensure that the uh, uh, the A pose mode is now reset and then you switch on the DRO button. So, that you can now see the cursor going to the x y z value. So, once you uh, take this cursor all the way down between x and y and z and shift it in the manner you can actually zero set all these different coordinates. So, that you can actually uh, put the tool at this particular uh, place as the origin and once this uh, zero setting action has been done in the x y and z stage we ensure that now the tool is located to the origin with respect to the work piece. So, when I have uh, taught about these uh, EDM process uh, I think I have already illustrated to all of you that there is something called an equilibrium gap which establishes between one of the tools and the work piece ok. And the equilibrium gap is done in a manner so that the work piece recedes away because of uh, the sparking and then the tool is closed on to the work piece and the gaps uh, uh, eventually uh, keeps on digging because of the dissolution of the work piece and that equilibrium gap has to be established here in this particular module also. We have already uh, told you that there is a zero position for the tool. So, we need to slightly take this tool up ok by one monitor maneuvering this z axis and uh, then stopping it after some distance and the tool now you can see has a clearance and the idea is that uh, whenever the machining process starts it just goes to near about the gap and then starts giving the high voltage signal. So, that machining can happen. Now, uh, one more uh, issue here is to set up the program. So, as you can see there are various command lines of the programs which are called steps uh, right here in the controller. So, you have 1 to 5 steps and you are basically setting up the various uh, values of x, y and z. 
So supposing there were an array of holes that you wanted to create on the surface, you would set up the various values of x and y in which drilling action would be needed and then the z value can be commensurately defined at every stage. So there can be multiple holes of different aspect ratios all over a surface. In this case we are doing a single hole, so we would be more concerned with only one hole. We have already set up the x, y and we have already calibrated that to the zero. So, uh, so what we are going to do is now uh, as the gap has already been predefined, the z gap is already predefined, we are going to go to this controller to the, uh, uh, the enter mode here so that you can ensure that it goes out of the DRO and uh, you can actually go to the program edit mode which is another key right here and which brings up a cursor here as you can see which it can be subsequently moved in the x, in the y and in the z direction. So x and y as I told you earlier are already zero set and there is a single hole being drilled so we really need not change the x and y value uh, but actually we want to change the z value so here we want to drill the hole in two steps in the first step we want to go about 25 millimeters into the workpiece and in the second program step which can actually be taken by uh, moving the cursor in the downward direction we want to go for a remaining amount of uh, 10 mm more this is an absolute positioning system so we are considering the motion only from the surface corresponding to the z gap equal to 0 in the system. So, you know in the first instance it scores 25 millimeters, in the second instance, in the second step it goes additional 10 millimeters, but we have to define the z from the surface itself just like we do in the CNC absolute mode uh, programming and so therefore we are setting up at 35 mm here. So, once we have done that we can again enter these values and go out of the system and now we are program ready for the CNC controller to take over and the machining to happen. So, here now uh, especially we have completed the CNC program on the controller we want need to we would now need to do three things on the machine one is that we have to ensure that the tool has the rotation intended rotation. We also have to ensure that the proper coolant supply or the proper dielectric fluid supply is there in the central portion of the tube. Okay, and that is because uh, of the pumping circuit coming into picture and operating and in the third mode we also need the buzzer in this particular case because any kind of abnormality has to be uh, given a sort of uh, indication to the user as a alarm button or a buzzer signal. So, these three tabs on the controller we would like to operate. So, we want to rotate the workpiece and you can see the spindle rotating as soon as this uh, has been put on. We want to indicate that if supposing of any abnormality there is a buzzer and then we want to actually uh, make the pump on, but before doing that we ensure that this area is completely covered because then there can be splashes etcetera which comes on to the system and uh, we have developed a acrylic stage for doing the coverage of this particular area and you can see now it is quite well protected and I would do the pump on in this particular mode. Okay. So, as soon as the pump is set on you can see that there is uh, you know uh, a lot of uh, coolant being circulated onto the system okay? uh, and then there is a spark on mode which we have further done and you can now see the spark happening for the machining process to take place okay? and uh, this spark would happen all the way when uh, you know so therefore the drill the EDM drilling action is actually happening right now. Okay? and the tube in this manner goes and you will see slowly see the spark going into the substrate and you will not be able to see the spark after a while anymore and uh, automatically the intended drill size uh, in terms of the diameter as well as in terms of the uh, length which the drilling would uh, necessitate does happen within the EDM machine. So, you can now see that the drill has gotten inside quite a bit actually and the spark is now uh, whatever is happening is inside that periphery. So, you cannot visualize it anymore only some trace sparks are coming in uh, the, the spot meant for it. So, this gives us a very fine micro drilling operation uh, uh, based on just EDM process which is actually a non metal to metal contact process for machining. So now the uh, the process is completed and it's been indicated by the buzzer signal. So we want to now actually extract the Z stage uh, by pulling this uh, all the way to the uh, top surface, okay? And this can be actually done by using the coarse uh, motion also of the particular stage. And you can see that uh, there is 
a hole uh, size which has come out to be almost about 35 mm as the tool feed if you want to monitor very closely actually has gone all the way uh, to about 35 mm or so. Okay. So this area right here of the tool you can see which has come out in the process of the EDM is about 35 mm and this is corresponding to the hole which has been created on the surface here. Okay. So this hole here uh, can be illustrated. Uh, you can see the hole here uh, quite well made. So this was the hole which has been made here. You can see still a lot of dielectric fluid is actually remaining in the, in the system. So uh, you can actually now see that this is the hole which has been made by our EDM drill uh, in the substrate surface. We will subsequently do some metrology aspects uh, in a later module of this particular illustration to see whether uh, the hole is perfectly okay or not. One of the way we can do it is to sort of cleave it into a piece and see along the depth how much is the length as well as the diameter of the particular hole. So uh, you saw how the drilling action takes place. However, the physics of this has been quite well illustrated earlier. A few things that I would just like to recall because we did this experiment today about the, the how the EDM process is happening here is that there is a sparking action which is happening between the tube and the surface, uh, the workpiece surface where the hole is being drilled. Uh, drilled. And the sparking action is also a function of uh, the, uh, the, the on off duration of the, uh, the sparking circuit which is actually a, a resistive capacitative circuit. I think I had done a detailed illustration of this earlier and also some theoretical calculations and uh, derivations. So there is a on time and off time which is there of this circuit which actually gives you an essence of the duty cycle. See the EDM process is something where the spark is being discharged. Okay, momentarily. So it is a spark, not an arc. So therefore, the spark is just a sudden release of the charge from the uh, the cathode, which is the tool in this case, to the anode. And the electrons are uh, the high velocity electrons are the the mechanism or or the agents which actually cause the thermal ablation process. So it is actually the momentum transfer of the electrons onto the anodic surface, which creates a energy delivery. And subsequently, there is a melting of the material on the surface. That's how the whole uh, process of EDM works in this particular case. Okay. So here, the idea is that uh, for different materials, you will have different amount of on and off times. And very nicely, it has been illustrated in this technology chart, which has been prepared in this uh, particular uh, manual for the machine, which talks about the different uh, grades of steel and also with respect to the different diameters of the electrode, how you would switch on and off the uh, and you do the, t the time setting for the, uh, the switching on and switching off mode of the EDM. Okay. So in order to ensure that the machining is a high yield and the electrode wear is subsequently very less, you have to operate on the characteristics which are given in this manual uh, for the system. So the tool parameters, uh, the EDM parameters, if you can look at towards the left here in this uh, particular, the first column uh, of this particular screen, it has uh, a mention of all the tool parameters. So the column here, as you can see, mentions here the different uh, T off, T on, T off, uh, that means the time for which the spark is in uh, operation, the peak uh, current in amperes, and then several other aspects like the maximum gap setting which is there, the sensitivity which we really want, and the tool wear rate that we are programming the system for. Okay, so the idea uh, is to sort of set up all these values for the grade of steel that we are machining. We need about a T on time of close to about 30 uh, microseconds okay? and uh, the T off time that is needed here is about 40 microseconds and these values I am reporting from the manual itself. Uh, we go to the maximum current setting and set it up at 6 amperes which is already set up. So we do not need to actually uh, set this up any further. The gap here is set between 0 and 10 mm that is the maximum gap that the EDM tool can allow. Uh, so we are setting it up at the maximum gap level which is about 10 mm and the sensitivity also correspondingly to the maximum sensitivity for about close to uh, 10. Uh, the, uh, the description of sensitivity in this particular case is the finesse with which you can control the z axis movement. Okay. So a uh, gradation of 10 on that would be the extreme fine movement of z uh, that you would be able to achieve while the machining process is carried out. And then finally the most important part which is here is the tool wear rate. And uh, it has been specified in the manual uh, that uh, wear is calculated approximately on the basis of 100 millimeters, uh, assuming 100 millimeters um, of uh, the length of the tool. And uh, you basically 
uh, allow uh, uh, the total percentage wear of the tool to be around 35% or so. So in this particular case, we have kept it slightly low, uh, the tool wear slightly low because we don't want to go all the way to about 100 millimeters. And so you allow for about close to 20% of the tool uh, to be one while the electrode uh, uh, EDM process, the electrode uh, drilling process is happening. So having set this tool parameters, uh, the whole process as we showed before continues and you have very fine, uh, high aspect ratio old structures being drilled on microsystems. Thank you.